Hello again, and welcome back to the Slow Flowers Show with Deborah Prinzing. This is episode 597. I'm delighted to host today's conversation with the creatives behind Black Florist Fund. Black Florist Fund is an endeavor embarked upon in partnership with the Association for Enterprise Opportunity and a team of Black entrepreneur advisors. Through donations and sponsorships, Black Florist Fund aims to provide worry-free capital grants and other crucial business resources to Black florists. These grants will be awarded to applicants who demonstrate a passion for the floral business community and a need for additional funding to help reach their goals and propel their businesses. Black Florist Fund hopes to provide valuable support to help stabilize and grow a number of Black-owned floral businesses each year. It is with profound gratitude that I welcome three individuals in the floral community who are going to share more about what Black Florist Fund is and how we can all get more involved. You'll hear from Elizabeth Cronin, founder and creative director of Osray Garden, John Caleb Pendleton, creative director of Planks and Pistols, and Taylor Bates of Dusk Lily Floral Design, the first recipient of a Black Florist Fund grant. All three are based in Chicago, and you'll hear how their stories are woven together to support entrepreneurial Black florists and flower farmers through this new initiative. We recorded this conversation earlier this week. You can see photos of Taylor's, John Caleb's, and Elizabeth's floral art in our show notes for episode 597 when we post the audio podcast uh, for that episode next Wednesday, February 15th at slowflowerspodcast.com. Let's jump right in and get started, and I'll share our sponsor thank yous after the conversation. Welcome back to the Slow Flowers Podcast with Deborah Prinzing. I am so excited today to have a very full Zoom room with three special guests, and we're going to talk about the Black Florist Fund, which I think a lot of people have seen pop up on social media. Maybe um, it's intriguing, but you want to know more. These are the people who are going to tell us all about it. So I'm going to introduce, uh, and you can see their names on the screen because I'm not quite sure what order you'll see people, but Elizabeth Cronin, founder and creative director of Osray Garden. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, how are you? It's great to see you here. Uh, Taylor Bates of Dusk Lily Floral. Hi, Taylor. Hi. Thanks for joining me. Uh, And my third guest is John Caleb Pendleton of planks and pistols and the black men flowers project. So uh, thank you, John, for joining us today too. It's great to be here. It is great. And um, I guess I would like to ask each of you to introduce yourselves a little bit and your, your role in the floral world and what your floral business is. Some of, of pe- some people may follow you already because of your great work, but um, Alyssa, why don't you go ahead and start and just um, tell us a little bit about Osray and uh, you have two stores now in Chicago, right? Yeah, so I opened Osrea's first location in 1999 in the Wicker Park neighborhood of Chicago. Um, And we also have a West Loop location that we opened almost, I don't know, four or five years ago. Um, We have had other locations at one point um, or another, but yeah, Mm -hmm. this is what we have right now. Wow. And is it um, full service design and retail? Um, yeah. I've seen your, I've seen some of your shop images on it on, uh, online, but I haven't been, been to visit. Yeah. So Osrey is really, you know, uh, a bit different. It was the first of its kind back in 1999 has been replicated and, um, populated all over the place. Um, <laughs> I always like to say that I wish I could have trademarked her. I would probably be a a wealthy florist, which there's not very many of us, but, um, (laughs) right. You know, um, we sell, we, in our West Loop shop, I'm sorry, in our Wicker Park shop in the original location, um, we have a full flower program. Um, but we also, I think, you know, why Osrey became what it did is because we also sell everything from like fine jewelry, we do interior design, um, you know, home apothecary, a lot of like personal scents. Um, so it's more of a well-rounded retail experience. Wow. Um, it was, you know, basically a, um, a concept store before that 10 years before that term even came about. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we do. Um, and, and yeah, it's a full service florist for sure. Yeah. And it's really, um, before the term lifestyle retail existed, you created a lifestyle that people wanted to immer- be immersed in and then take a bit of it home with them. I sure did. 
Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything else you want to say? Ooh, about Osrey? What yeah. about? I have so yeah. much to say. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, it's, it's I did say I. I noticed you had a local flowers tab on your website on your homepage, and that that gave me the shivers. Of course. Yeah, we love our look. I mean, I think, I think the reason why Osrey is what it is is because it has always been deeply rooted in community and in uplifting others like it's not new to us it's how we've always behaved um you know to the best of our ability at mm-hmm. any given time and so we you know early on when instagram became a thing i noticed people just like claiming a lot of things as their own and i i i wanted to be really certain both on our website on and in, in all of the ways that the world finds us that they have access to find the other people that are in the stratosphere as well mm-hmm. as that are in our communities so mm-hmm. whether it be um you know we have right the our local florists that we source from listed on there we also have like a fairly extensive list of like black florists to find um, so that people can locate um, other florists in Chicago um, more easily and around the United Mm -hmm. States. Um, So yeah, we'll try to share the love. Uh, Okay. Taylor, uh, Taylor Bates of Dusk Lily Floral. Uh, It's so great to meet you. Um, Give us a little introduction of your business and, um, what what are all the pieces of the pie with your floral studio? Um, so yes, I am the owner of Dusk Lily Floral. Um, I started my business in 2020. Um, and I just operate like out of a small like home studio. Um, I don't have a shop or anything at the moment. Um, I specialize in commissions, small weddings and events. Um, I do like some set design here and there. Um, but it's just me. I have like a few people who help like with freelance and things like that. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, my work is more, um, I would say I try to be a little bit more like artful and it's very different and very like whimsical. Um, so non like not very traditional. Um, although right. I love like all different types of floral design. Um, but I think that has like been the style that I've developed. Um, and I've been like working on developing my own take on flowers and just like how I view them and interact with them. Um, so yeah, that's me. And I, I will say that uh, all three of you have shared photos of some of your, in, your pieces, installations and designs. So those we will include in our show notes when the audio uh, podcast of this uh, interview uh, post to slowflowerspodcast.com. So uh, that is going to be the teaser to get everyone to log on and and check that out next week. Um, just to back up, Taylor, you you are an alumni of Osray Garden, right? And tell me how you and Elizabeth met. Um, so I started working there like right out of college. Um, and I just like completely fell in love with it. I it was it will like forever be like my favorite job and it really just changed my life because the bulk of like what I know about flowers I learned from Elizabeth and just like my coworkers and everyone there. Um, yeah, it was like a very like, I think a really valuable, important like time in my life working there. But yeah, it kind of inspired me to kind of go off and do my own thing like after I stopped working there. Um, and then COVID happened and it just so happened like it was like a perfect time for me to kind of establish my brand and I had time to practice and kind of figure out like who I was and like what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I love like the whole Osway Garden team. I worked there when I was like literally right out of college. I love yeah. it. I, I, I think that we all need those mentors who tell sure. us when it's time to move on and do our own thing. Like text her from time to time, like, Hey, can you help me? Like, what is this? And it's like, yeah, that's cool. Um, okay. Uh, John, let's, let's talk about your business and your, how did you and, uh, partner with Elizabeth and, um, get involved in black florist fund. Your business is a studio based design, <laughs> um, uh, weddings and events, or what, what is it that, um, planks and pistols really focuses on? Yeah, so Planks and Crystals was birthed out of me just doing a side hustle. I used to, um, my like 
career trajectory was youth development, and I worked in the youth nonprofit world. I worked um, in public schools in Chicago, um, mentoring youth and employing, getting the community involved in local public schools. And I picked up floral design as a hobby during that time. When I got married, I would just design stuff around the house for my wife. And then um, I was waiting on like paperwork for my new job in a public school um Chicago Public Schools is a lot of red tape and so I was just sitting at home for a couple of months just getting paid and I just posted it like hey anybody want a full arrangement and people were like you do this <laughs> and um my wife at that point she knew I mean I'd done rethrust and done just stuff around the house and so then I started making things for other people and um and it became really um a good balance to the stress mm. of youth development work. Mm. Um, and so I did that on the side, the job I was working, the organization I was working for tanked. And then I was like, I can't do youth nonprofit anymore. And so I just like kind of took a respite, um, <laughs> a mental respite, physical taxation um, and went into coffee. And so I did coffee for a few years, managed a couple shops. And was the flowers were just growing as I was still doing coffee. And then the coffee shop I was managing closed down two years ago um, because of COVID. It was just bleeding out. And so they were like, we got to close. And um, I was like, okay, either I can go work at the other shop and like take hours or I can like make sure my team is good and the flowers are taking off. So I was like, let's just take the plunge. Let's just do it. And so um I've been full time for the last two years, which is crazy to say out loud. Um, but um, planks and pistols—the name of it—is because planks. I grew up doing woodworking with my father, and I grew up like watering my mom's. I I grew up doing woodworking with my father, so planks of wood, and then I yeah. grew up watering my mom's flowers. So um, the pistols have taken off more than the planks. But um, this <laughs> this, <laughs> this year, um, I'm looking. <clears throat> To get back into the woodworking more and Planks and Pistols as a brand um it's mainly um I tend to do lots of bold primary colors lots of different textures um I like to just I I literally while I'm designing I'm thinking in geometric shapes and mm -hmm. stuff I love mm -hmm. my brain like thinks in um numbers and I don't know I just like I I, I mean I grew up in a wood shop so I like yeah. I love geometry and all that so that really informs my style and um I just try to pull from other um, black artistry as well mm -hmm. and um to influence how I design that's cool John we have a member a soul flowers member in uh uh Eugene Oregon who basically saves um uh distressed fencing boards and mm. makes makes these wooden boxes for her arrangements. I'm going to send you some pictures because you could do that in your sleep and you could totally elevate that with, you know, all the wood that gets tossed and just, you know, yeah. put in the landfill. I have a feeling there's a whole, uh, you know, container line coming from <laughs> or something from your wood shop. That's cool. You know, yeah, that's that truly is the hope. I want to start making my own um, vessels and stuff. So neat. Yeah. That's neat. Well, the three of you came together. I guess, uh, to really birth Black Florist Fund. And let's just talk about how that project came to be. Um, I guess I'm going to assume that, Elizabeth, this was something that you um, came up came up with the idea. And then Taylor is your first, um, the first recipient, and John is on, your, on the advisory committee. And is that correct? Tell us how you, <laughs> how you three friends came together. And, and I know other people are involved, too. Yeah, um, I had started talking about, but long before it had its name, uh, three plus years ago, I started talking about doing something like this, um, just internally with my director of operations. And I was saying that I really wanted us, the, the original goal was much smaller than it is now. The original goal was to literally just um, see if we could get a bunch of other white florists that we knew to 
like commit to putting a percentage of their profit aside and then feeding it out to like folks, black folks who wanted to start their own flower shops or run their flower, you know, whatever they needed for their flower business. And it was like a little baby idea. And my very wonderful friend, Molly Dowling got involved and there are no baby ideas with her. She's in, she runs one of the largest nonprofits in Chicago. And so she was like, you know, let's dream bigger, let's dream bigger, let's dream bigger. And um, eventually, you know, during um, the shutdown, I was able to actually find some time to do some more work on this. And we ended up being connected because of Molly with an, an, a wonderful organization called AEO. And um, they are one of the leading microfinancers and lenders uh, and grant givers to the black small business community mm, like mm-hmm. in the world. Mm. Uh, and so they were the perfect kind of partner for us. And then uh, Osrey Garden in tandem with them spent like a year and a half building out basically a, a framework so that not only can we do this in the flower world, but we can also, you know, I think we can make a difference in the flower world. That's really great. I don't think that changes much overall in this country. And so the, the great thing about it is the like model that we created, the infrastructure that was created is literally available for any other sector to plug into. So like, you know, if the brewers of America wanted to get get together and do the same thing that we were doing, or, you know, candle makers or, you know, book binders, I don't, you know, whatever you are, whoever it is that notices that there is a disproportionate advantage, everyone, um, in each sector, um, yeah then they can plug into this model. And so, uh, I don't know, God, I started talking to John about it like t- two, two plus years ago. And <clears throat> then eventually when it came time to find the advisory board, it, he was obviously like the one of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who else am I going to get? I'm going to get John <laughs> because he's the guy that like, you know, is down for everything is so wanting to be helpful in community, in floristry, and in any community that he hops into. It's also just like one of the most genuine, like spectacular humans I've ever met. So he, you you know, was, he came to mind. And then when it came time to, you know, we're we're struggling to raise money for this thing. Um, And so when it came time, when, when AEO was like, I think what we need to do is nominate a first person before we open the grant process to get the momentum going, everyone was like, it's Taylor. She's like, Mm -hmm. obviously the person Mm -hmm. that we're going to choose. So that's how we all ended up sort of together in the Black Forest. And and, um, AEO gives you sort of this fiscal uh, sponsor that gives you like legitimacy and credibility for people who are concerned about, well, are you really, is this technically a nonprofit or whatever? Is that sort of why that works for you? Yeah. We are not a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. We looked into that for like six months and we were like, nope, we don't have the bandwidth for that. Yeah. So we joined with AEO who, you know, so folks, what folks can know about the Black Florist Fund is the money doesn't doesn't come to me. It doesn't go to us. It doesn't go to any one of us. It goes to AEO, which does this all the time. And essentially um, they have a team of grant, right? We've been working on the grant parameters for over a year with them. Those are all in place. They have a team of um, application readers and grant, you know, writers that, that help us do um, all of that backend work. We don't, you know, we don't, we're not in charge of who gets the money once we've set the parameters other than Taylor who we nominated. Once we set the parameters, anyone can apply that that you know yeah. is within the the structure of that and then AEO chooses them based on the application process. So that's cool. That's cool. So Taylor, you uh did you know this was coming or uh when you were nominated was this a uh, like out of the blue? Um I know I it was out of the blue and it was such a surprise and I was so grateful for it. Um, Elizabeth had mentioned it to me before <laughs> when they were like still like working everything out. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. She's like, yeah, you should apply once we get it all squared away. And then like some months went past and we were just like kind of, I was doing my own thing. And then I ran into her at the flower market and could we go to like, we all go to the same flower markets. Um, and yeah, and I was like, 
um, I was like, I'm going to cry <laughs> in a second because I was going to apply. Um, and I just I had no idea that they were just going to nominate me like that. So I was yeah, I'm mm-hmm. like super grateful for that. Mm-hmm. Well, probably like a lot of solopreneurs, everything you do is, to get your business off the ground is you're self-funded, right? I mean, you it's a hustle. Um, no, there's no bank going to offer you a loan. There's no. Right building that you can just move into rent free. I mean, you have to make this all happen yourself, but just by the force of your, your drive and your, your creativity. Right. Yeah. And I, you know, it's really helped. Like I can finally like, yeah, I'm getting a studio space with John or like I'm um, moving into like his studio space and I can finally like work outside of home, uh, which I haven't been able to do. I got like a new computer, just like all these things that I've been needing, but you know, look, obviously like, the floral industry is not the most lucrative right industry. like we do it because we love it um so yeah it's been like a significant help oh that's great so when did that all happen like just last fall right yeah the, the nomination was announced on social media I, I i started seeing the post and i was it was second half of 2022 right november it was, it was like yeah november okay I think okay so. mm-hmm. that's great so taylor um the uh just the, that extra boost. I know it wasn't like, it wasn't like going to Rio for vacation money, but I mean, it was an extra boost for your business. Um, that, that made a difference, um, that you're one individual, you want to see this magnified and multiplied to help other black florists. Yeah. hundred percent. Wow. Um, and John, uh, you being on the advisory committee, did you end up, um, kind of teaming up with Elizabeth to, and the other other folks to, to do this nomination of Taylor? Is she somebody you see as a rising star that you really wanted to support? Yeah, no, the, Taylor is, is a star. Like, there's no rising about it. Um, <laughs> Thank you for that. I, put, put, um, correct me. I'm so sorry, Taylor. No, no, you know, you're, you're, it wasn't a correction. It's just, that's just, I'm just, just got to put it out there. Um, But for me, like, I just had a birthday last, or well, I mean, <laughs> I just had a birthday last year. Everyone has a birthday. Yeah. But uh, I had a huge party. And uh, for the party, I was like, Taylor has to do my flowers. Like, uh, I like I was having a big... Which is like big, no pressure. But. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a compliment. But yeah, you're doing a florist for flowers for another florist. Yeah, there's a lot yeah, of was I was like, there's only one person. And it, she killed it. You know, like, I was like, happy when like, she told me she was available. So... Um, yeah, Taylor's amazing. And um, and I also just want to, like, speak to, like, Elizabeth, too. Like, I know she is not like, oh, let's talk about me. But Elizabeth, like, I met Elizabeth in January of 2020. So we've only known each other for three years. And it feels like we've known each other for at least 10. But um, I was, like, my business was growing in that time. And so during January, I was, like, I want to talk to some of the more established floors in Chicago. And I'm like the king of shooting my shot. Like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? So I just walked into Azra one day and asked if Elizabeth was there and they were like, yeah. And <laughs> this random black dude. <laughs> and, and I was like, I'm actually a florist. Um, and I love your work. And I just want to say hello and see if we can meet up sometime. And um, she made just start following me on Instagram um and we just yeah and I was doing these public installations and we met uh I did one near her house and she just came out brought me like water and popsicles and we we're just chatting and I was like this white lady is so interesting and um <laughs> it's like, it's like, she seems like she's really about it and and it's just in this in the, the world in general but I, I think too especially in the flower world there are a lot of um, liberal white people who talk a big game and they they have a lot of lip service, but then it's just like they don't really do anything. Mm-hmm. So, like, bringing me water and popsicles was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I'm walking distance from your place. But then she started bringing up like this black forest fine shit. Like, again, it wasn't a name, but she was just like, yeah, like, we black forest need to like, uh, uh. and I at that point, I did not know, like, oh, if Elizabeth's saying it, she's actually about it. And, um, and then I, I think a year had passed, and, um, we were all out for drinks after Valentine's Day. She wasn't there, but her team was. And one of her teammates was like, yeah, we're Elizabeth got me working on this thing. We're like trying to plan it. And I was like, 
oh it's really like, happening she's for, like she's like for real and like again like at that point we were already friends but in my mind i'm like okay we're friends but like how much is she really like you know like she's running a whole business like does she really have time to like do this mm-hmm. and then i'm like oh this is like they're talking about this behind closed doors like this is really in motion mm-hmm. so it's been really cool for it to be like this little like oh like i really want to do this one day mm-hmm. to like Put, putting help. it into action and yeah. actually taking the concept that was a big idea into reality to yeah to the you know to the studio of taylor and witnessing how that's in, impacted her in a pretty short period of time that's yeah. great thank you for sharing that john and you know just in general i think um the the idea that it almost sounds like elizabeth you want to um have this challenge out to any um privileged you know white florist um who can maybe take a step back and say if i am int- intentional about this i can build this into my basically into my budget right and say x percentage i'm going to set aside to fund development for people who haven't had the opportunities i've had i mean is that sort okay. of how you, what you challenge people to do I, I mean i think there's two the challenge is twofold one Yes, absolutely do that. And two, I mean, all the florists that I know, we all have the clients that have the money. Like we just do. Mm -hmm. And we all have access to people who can, I mean, it's like, you know, there's been a few florists who've hopped on that are doing like what we do, which is at our, because we have retail, it's like at our checkout, we ask every person checking out, do you want to, you know, so it's like, it's, it's, you know, people say yes to a dollar, $5. It's like, you know, in December, we put an extra 2,500 in black florist fund from what we raised at our registers. We also did a, a big, um, raffle over, um, when Osrae's like around Osrae's 23rd birthday party, we raised almost $15,000 on that raffle. Like you can also, what, what I encourage, and I think what has been a little discouraging to me is that I very hopefully, cause there's the eager white lady in me, no matter how often I try to talk her into reality, but like very hopefully as, um, we all, sadly witnessed the public murder of George Floyd and florists were putting up all the words and all the this and yeah. they're out, I'm outraged I'm surprised here's a black box whatever the f everybody was doing on their Instagram yeah, yeah. I was taking notes mm-hmm. because I already we were already working on this so I started a list of all the florists that I saw doing that and when we launched Black Florist Fund and I hit those people up, there was like over a hundred and maybe 20 people on my list. I've had responses from 12 of them. Mm-hmm. You know, I've reached out more than once. And it's like, that just is what it is. Yeah. But I mean, it, in a way it's like, wow, 10% like put their money where their mouth is, you know, just in that one subset. I mean, that well, would be the, 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 me trying to be a Pollyanna and go, well, that's positive. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm anti Pollyanna on this one. I'm a Pollyanna <laughs> about a lot of things, but I'm anti Pollyanna. Yeah. On this. Yeah. I was raised by a Pollyanna. I can be a Pollyanna, but this is not where, like on this one, I'm like 12 of you. Like I didn't even get a response because I was very clear when I laid it out. Like you don't, we're all small businesses. We're all mm-hmm. struggling. You don't have to give physical money. You can go out and raise money get a GoFundMe going, then put that money in the black. Mm-hmm. Like there's a million options. We have literally page after page of like, here's a script for doing this. Here's a script for doing this. Here's all the, so it's like, we have done all of the work for That's you. Right. Every garden itself put in hundreds and hundreds of hours last year to do it. It's not that hard to just plug into it. So I'm challenging florists. It's like, yeah, cool. If you can put 5% aside, please, hell yeah, do that. But that's not the yeah. only thing you can do, right? It's not, the, it's not even yeah. close to the only thing yeah. that you can do. Really glad yeah. you brought that up. Um, and also I kind of, when I first saw it, I kind of thought it was a Chicago centric thing. And it, that's definitely not the case, correct? No, no it's nationwide. Yeah, that's wonderful. And yeah, John. I want to add to that you were, you were, um, Deborah, you pointed out like, you know, white floors who are like privileged. And then well, Elizabeth just said, like, we're all small businesses who are all like struggling. And I think, I think that's the thing that 
I, I wish people understood about the Black Forest Fund and and also the our desire for it to be replicated in other in other small industries. It's not that we're saying like, oh, white forests have it easy. Right. We're, we're saying that we understand that we live in a country where to exist as a black person causes different stresses and different challenges. And and you add that on to being a small business owner when another black person is killed, when another black child is killed, when you know, it's just like that's really, really stressful. Yeah, and then it's like just always there, right? It's the yeah, trauma. And then it's also all the documented like the the research documented struggles of like getting business loans and all of that stuff of being a black business owner as well. It's like we're not saying that white business owners are all rich and all just rolling in the dough. We're just saying that we acknowledge that black florists and black small business owners in general have an added stressor, you know, and there's a way for for non-black business owners, non-black florists to help out in that. And, you know, I, I know I'm sure Taylor was too, but like during 2020, it's like, here's five black floors you should be following on instagram here's blah blah blah, blah. and it's like why well, i'm on this list you know like i follow me isn't doing any type of societal right. change you know right. like how passionate like elizabeth is about it just like she's always been like that with like every aspect of like her business and like working under her it's like this lady means business and she really really loves what she does i don't think i've ever met anyone else like that like in the flower industry like as far as like working under someone um so yeah I think it's really um I think it's really important hmm. wow I'm I'm feeling uh, really inspired to figure out what we can do with from with slow flowers to to get on board and help and I guess we've been trying to get this podcast going for a while so this will be our 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 debut conversation but to be continued um I you know I want to get all those resources Elizabeth's talked about and make sure that they're available and we'll share those in our show notes. Um, before we wrap up, I did want to ask uh, John about the Black Men Flowers Project because that intrigued me. And um, I just thought it, it it this looks like it's your passion project, at, which also you self-fund, right? Um, so so I didn't start the Black Men Flower Project. Oh, I'm okay. Just, You're part of I, it. <clears throat> I'm the Chicago florist for it. Okay. Um, oh, cool. So a guy named Robert WV. He is from Chicago, but then moved to um, moved to Columbus, uh, Ohio. And while he was there, um, the phrase like, you know, give give people flowers, you know, give black men flowers. Um, it's a more figurative phrase, like focused around like you know, praising and giving kind words. And he was like. I should really do this. And so he like sent flowers to a friend of his and he he tells the story about how when he first did it, it was kind of like, like the the friend was like, what in the world? But, um, but then he started this nomination process in Columbus. And when he came back to Chicago, he wanted to launch it here. And so um, he reached out to me Mm -hmm. and it was an easy, easy yes for me. So, um, so yeah. (laughs) We're just black men Love nominate it. each other. I design the flowers and um, anybody like people give. And so people get Robert. Robert was self-funding at all. And so a lot of his own money has gone into it. And then people give towards the project. So I just designed the flowers and deliver to the nominee. So That's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to share that link to that as well. So people can know about uh, nominating uh, and and financially supporting it. Right. Mm-hmm. So what um, is coming up with the um, 2023 cycle for uh, the fund? We hope that Taylor is going to still <clears throat> be involved. I think she's now woven into the fabric of BFF forever. And um, it was really, we got the opportunity to do an IG live with someone at AEO and Taylor really talked about, and I think it's one of the most important parts that people need to know is like Taylor very like she laid out very clearly like here are the things that I need to do with this money in order to take the next step in my business so our last our first meeting of the year was last week and we are about to open you know we've got about 40 
thousand in the fund right now, and we're about to open the first grant application process. Wow, that's um, great. So stay tuned. Our follow up yeah. meeting is this week, and we will have like exact dates. And in the meantime, we're just going to try to keep refilling that fund. I mean, that it's like, we don't great. want it to be, we, we want it to just keep going and going. Yeah. And going. So. Because every, every year cycle, you're going to hopefully, um, you know, give away all that money, but then have, you have to replenish it the next, the next yeah. cycle. Yeah. It, will, it will all be given away much more quickly than it will replenish, I know. which is why, you know, I think, and, and that's, you know, the other thing that's been really just hard to look at is like how much beautiful like response and activity we got from the black floral community who very much want need and fully fucking deserve this money. Yeah. And how little is happening on the other side to keep the money in that fund. So yeah. I would like to balance that out because we had higher hopes for what we were raising and we wanted to give away, we wanted to give away some, some bigger chunks of yeah. money to, yeah. to poor us had been in the game for a while that have like a big staff to support, but we're going to stick to the, to the 10,000. I think we'll, I think we're going to be able to give 120 and then maybe two tens or 120, a 10 and two fives. We, we are just right. like sussing that out um, this yeah. week and we'll know more by the end, right after Valentine's day, we'll know wow. and the, the grant will open. Well, yeah. And this is, you know, like everything it takes is sort of, you, you need to get that, that momentum going and that on-ramp easier for others to get involved. So let's challenge, we'll challenge the Soul Flowers community. I know the person that mostly brought you to my radar is Sue McCleary, who yeah. has a black donate to black florist fund uh, button on her website and, and, or her Instagram. I can't remember which, but just something as simple as that totally. goes and straight into the fund is yeah. a way to, to magnify what, what this opportunity is. And we're going to be hosting, Sue has been one of our most wonderful partners. We are going to be hosting Sue in June for a, um, she's going to do a, a an all day workshop mm -hmm. um, for both florists and non-florists alike. And she's got, she reached out and got Mayesh to donate the flowers and um, she is donating all of every dime that that she gets for the ticket prices to BFF. So like that, you know, I'm very, that'll well, be a great fundraiser. Extremely excited. Yeah. That's wonderful. And that could be a model for, you know, people in other markets to do it, do that yeah. as well. Thank do you. Do your workshops, yeah. donate your workshop money. Absolutely. Well, before we wrap up, is there anything uh, you guys want to share individually of what you're excited about for 2023? I, it sounds like Taylor, you're moving into a studio space with John. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> So I think it'll be great to just work next to another really creative, successful person. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited for this year. I think also it is a lonely business in a way when you're a solo printer and you're kind of isolated, you need that, that camaraderie just so that you right. bounce ideas off. And yeah. so yeah. great. So John, you must have a space that is like large enough and you where's so, the room for the wood shop you're going to keep that in there right <clears throat> so i actually just i didn't even tell taylor and it was this but i i just got um i'm moving into a wood shop down the street from my where i i do flowers now and so it's a shared workspace that i that we have for the um, for my flower space um so um yeah it's pretty large and it's like it's great having like there's a collage artists and, photo and two photographers mm. in this space mm -hmm. um so it's great having like other creative energy in the space as well but i'm so so excited to uh, mm. get in the same spot with taylor it's gonna mm. be fun oh that sounds great yeah like a maker's sounds like it's sort of a maker's space then but mm -hmm. a lot of creatives um well great i i don't know if i'll get to chicago this year but if i do i want to visit all of you um Elizabeth, what's cooking for you? And besides Black Florist Fund and and two retail stores, are, are you is HBO f in full bloom coming back? Everybody wants to know. I know. I want it. We want to know too. The thing is, is that HBO was purchased by Discovery, and Discovery has been. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone at HBO that we worked with no longer works at HBO, unfortunately. Mm, that the world's kind of dangling. We have mm. no idea. Mm -hmm. They've canceled a lot of the shows. We haven't been canceled, but we've also, right, <laughs> excuse me, right now you can watch us in Australia, New Zealand, like, Japan. So you can watch it elsewhere. Um, not in, the, it's no longer on 
in the States. So oh, we, we had no, no idea. idea. Oh, we have no idea what's going on. We would love a season three. I'm working That's with crazy. my producer on some other um, stuff. And so hopefully if that doesn't come back, something very similar. I just spent the uh, Maurice just drove um, to meet me in Tucson for the last few days. So uh, the two of us are always cooking something up. We were just uh, together for the last like five days. So it was oh great. my gosh. Okay. We are rooting for you because Thanks. during COVID we all binged on all the season episodes of full bloom because we were just sitting at home and it was so fun to feel like we were with flower people. So congratulations on what you've accomplished. And I hope that, yeah, I hope that it, it, something new happens that, and I'm sure Taylor and John will get sucked into it. So, um, maybe, maybe something, uh, that has to do with black florist fun too. Um, thank you all so much for your generosity and just for your honesty and, willing to have this conversation. It was important for me to hear it. Um, and I, I just really appreciate you putting the time in to let us get this out there to a larger audience. Um, I really appreciate it. And I will see you, um, online where we're going to try to slow flowers. will make a donation for sure to the fund and try to get some of our members to, um, you know, like Sue to, to think creatively. I mean, that's the thing. I think people are so overwhelmed by fundraising, but you're, you can with flowers, it's sort of the door opener and it's, you can think creatively. And I know you guys probably have lots of suggestions that you're urging people to do, but I I'll take any of those. Thank you so much. Yeah. This was Thank you, Deborah. Thank so you great to, time. so great to meet you all. Okay. We'll talk to you soon and um, happy Valentine's day. I hope you all survive it. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks so much for joining me today. <clears throat> this was a great conversation. You'll find all the assets for promoting and supporting the Black Florist Fund in our show notes at slowflowerspodcast.com. And there'll also be links to donate directly to the fund. Uh, I'll have resources on how to become a partner to support the 2023 round of fundraising and grant making. All of that will be in our show notes. I hope you're as inspired as I am to make a difference in any way that works for you. And a reminder, you'll find the replay video of this, of this show and other resources at slowflowerspodcast.com when the audio is posted as our podcast on February 15th. So let's thank our sponsors whose financial support brings the Slow Flowers show to you. This show is brought to you by slowflowers.com, the free online directory to more than 850 florist shops and studios who design with local, seasonal, and sustainable flowers, and to the farms that grow those blooms. It's the conscious choice for buying and sending flowers. And thank you to our lead sponsor, Farm Grow Flowers. Farm Grow Flowers delivers iconic burlap wrap bouquets and lush, abundant arrangements to customers across the U.S., supporting U.S. flower farms by purchasing more than $10 million of U.S. grown fresh and seasonal flowers and foliage annually. Discover more at farmgrowflowers.com. Thank you to Store It Cold, creators of the revolutionary CoolBot, a popular solution for flower farmers, studio florists, and farmer florists. Save thousands when you build your own walk-in cooler with the CoolBot and an air conditioner. Don't have time to build your own? They also have turnkey units available. You can learn more at storeitcold.com. Thank you to the Association of Specialty Cut Flower Growers. Formed in 1988, ASCFG was created to educate, unite, and support commercial cut flower growers. Its mission is to help growers produce high quality floral material and to foster and promote the local availability of that product. Learn more at ASCFG.org. <clears throat> and thank you to Red Twig Farms. Based in Johnstown, Ohio, Red Twig Farms is a family-owned farm specializing in peonies, daffodils, tulips, and branches, a popular peony bouquet by mail program, and their Spread the Hope campaign, where customers purchase 10 tulip stems for essential workers and others in their community. Learn more at redtwigfarms.com. The Slow Flower Show is a member-supported endeavor, and I value our loyal members and supporters. If you're new to our weekly show or our long-running podcast, check out all of our resources at slowflowerssociety.com. I'm Deborah Prinzing, host and producer of The Slow Flower Show and The Slow Flowers Podcast. Next week, you're invited to join me in putting more slow flowers on the table, one stem, one vase at a time. The content and opinions expressed here are either mine alone or those of my guests alone, independent of any podcast sponsor or other person, company, or organization. Thanks so much for joining us today, and 